This video includes an ad by NVIDIA AI. It's not going to get any better. Uh, from, from this moment on, on, it's downhill. Life like here in New York City is hard. What do you do during the day? During the day, nothing, just like this. We walk on the street only. A migrant robbery ring plaguing New York. They are nonetheless preying on New Yorkers and making our city less safe. Totalmente gratis es una ayuda que nos brinda el Estado. And if you're pregnant and give birth here, there's your golden ticket. I'm here in New York City, and New York City has recently became the epicenter of the migrant crisis here in the United States. And today, I'll be spending 24 hours living with migrants here inside the city. Nearly 200,000 illegal immigrants have been sent to New York City in the past year, and in this video, I'll be living and spending time with migrants for the next 24 hours. Due to New York City being a sanctuary city, they have opened their doors to migrants once they cross the border, and in states such as Texas, to move migrants out of their cities, they will ship them to cities like New York City and Chicago. These cities legally have to protect these migrants and give them shelter, medical help, and provide access to the U.S. court system. It is estimated that New York City will have spent $9 billion taking care of migrants by 2025, and each day they are spending roughly $12 million taking care of migrants. But it is unknown what these migrants do on a daily basis. For that reason, I will be spending time with various different groups of migrants throughout this video. I will be going to where they live, seeing how they survive to make money. I will try to understand why they come to the United States and much more. I first met up with a migrant from Ecuador named Fabian. Hola Fabian! Como esta? Mucho gusto. ¿Qué tal? Igualmente. ¿Dónde está viviendo ahora mismo? Y es un hotel, es un shelter. Este es un cheste. Yo llegué hace unos 15 días a este lugar. ¿Cuántos diferentes lugares han vivido desde que llegó aquí en los Estados Unidos? Este es mi tercer lugar. Estuve en un lugar antes que se llama el Bronx. ¿Cuánto tiempo lleva aquí en los Estados Unidos? Aquí en Estados Unidos llevo ya alrededor de... va a cumplir seis meses. Está haciendo los migrantes ahora como a, a mediodía para sobrevivir, ¿por qué? Los migrantes en esta hora están en hora de lunch. De ahí salen, salen a, muchos a buscar trabajo, salen muchos, son, son delegates también. ¿Y ahí cómo, cómo son los almuerzos aquí? En la... Para serte sincero, la comida no es tan buena. ¿Crees que, que no es posible gusta? que yo pueda entrar aquí al edificio con usted? No sé si te dejarán entrar. Vamos a tratar. Yeah. Me and Fabian, we're gonna go into the shelter right now. We're gonna see what it's all about. I tried to enter into the shelter with Fabian, however, they rejected me, and the reason uh, for was very in? strange. Yeah. Wait, so why can't we go in? Or I can't go in with him? No. No? What if I want to use the bathroom? No. And the, like, so do they have to pay to stay in here, or is it completely free for the migrants? ¿Por qué piensa que es un gran secreto para nosotros para entrar a, aquí a los shelters? Se van a dar cuenta de la atención, cómo es, atienden a la gente aquí, la mala atención, la, las reglas que ponen, así, la comida pésima, tantas cosas, ¿no? ¿Tenía una familia en Ecuador? ¿Tenía una uh, esposa? Claro, ahí tengo a mi esposa, mis dos hijos. ¿Y ahora dónde están ellos? Ellos están en, mi, en Ecuador, okay. yo estoy aquí en este país solo, solo. ¿Cómo tomaste la decisión para salir de su país, para venir aquí sabiendo que iba a dejar a su familia ahí en Ecuador? Después que me... Que después que ya tu, tuve llamadas anónimas, llamadas amenazantes y también extorsiones que tuve muchas cosas allá en Ecuador. ¿Y su idea fue para venir aquí para que podría trabajar, conseguir dinero para enviar a su familia? Claro, mi deseo aquí trabajar, salir las cosas, primeramente trabajar y hacer las cosas muy bien en este país. En este país hay que hacer las cosas muy bien. So you're a guy here in New York City, a lot of people are wondering, why are a lot of single age men coming here without their families? Porque no tenía el, el dinero para traer a mi familia, ¿no? Y ahora mismo, si tenía la oportunidad de salir a Nueva York, ¿saldrá, ¿saldría de aquí o quedaría aquí? Claro, si hay la oportunidad de salir de vaya a otro lugar, claro, me, me iría, uh -huh. claro. Ahora si me doy cuenta, no todo lo que habría aquí es oro. Uno decía, cuando, uno decía, chuta, voy a Estados Unidos, consigo dos, tres trabajos, trabajo hasta día y noche, pero, pero llegando aquí a la realidad es muy, muy duro, muy difícil. La realidad es otra, no es, no es lo mismo como uno piensa en nuestro país, la realidad aquí es otra, es otra. Aquí en este país, yo qué sé yo, me gano 200 dólares en el día, yo esos 200 dólares me lo ganaba en el día en Ecuador. Lo que gano aquí, 200 dólares en el diario, me lo ganaba en Ecuador, en mi negocio, muchas cosas. Entonces, ya, de hecho, está ganando menos dinero aquí que en Ecuador. Claro, me sale lo mismo, igual que allá en Ecuador, claro. Así ¿Por qué es. no ahora salga de aquí para ir a Ecuador de nuevo. Porque está muy peligroso Ecuador. Ecuador está muy peligroso. Do you think the migrants are actually helping the city or being more of a chaos for the city? Hay muchas personas que vienen a hacer lo malo, a hacer quedar mal, 
hay mucha gente de Venezuela que ha venido a este país a hacer quedar mal y por todos, por todos pagamos los platos rotos todos los migrantes. Hay mucha gente que vino, como dice, para hacer lo malo. Este país ahorita recogió toda basura que viene de otro país. Toda basura que viene de otro país recogió Estados Unidos. Mucha gente, como se dice, de malos antecedentes, mucha gente, como se dice, de, que allá en Ecuador, en, en Venezuela, fueron delincuentes, aquí mismo lo son. Yo, yo en un cheste estuve, estuve hospedado con un, con un migrante ecuatoriano, hasta vivía al lado mío, estaba, dormía al lado mío. Esa persona venía todos los días robando zapatos, ropa, y a mí me daba iras. Estuve hasta a punto de denunciarlo, traer a la policía para que lo quite todo eso, lo que tienen ahí guardado, porque me daba indignación que no vienen a hacer lo bueno aquí en este país, sino vienen a hacer lo malo. Now over two and a half million migrants have entered in the United States over the past year. However, there is a catch. They entered and cannot work. How does that make sense? Because so many migrants have entered in the country illegally, and with the majority of them saying they are here to claim asylum, they have to present themselves to a judge in order to receive working permits. But these court dates are years out. So these migrants cannot work legally, so they have to get creative if they want to make money. So I wanted to see how Fabian would make $10 so that way we could eat lunch. We need money to buy lunch. So we gotta think of some ways to make some money so we can buy some lunch. Andamos sin dinero. No tenemos papeles. Pero queremos comer algo rico. ¿Cómo vamos a ganar dinero para que podamos almorzar? Te cuento que a veces he estado todo el día sin comer yo. Vamos a trabajar para conseguir nuestro almuerzo. ¿Cómo ah. vamos a ganar dinero aquí? in the city of the Bronx. Haciendo cualquier cosa, haciendo cualquier cosa. And now, before me and Fabian start making money, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video. And to make this video possible, I partner with NVIDIA AI, who is the sponsor of this video. NVIDIA AI is an AI video app that helps you create fully edited videos ready to publish using just text prompts, meaning that it will write the script for you, it will select the stock footage, and it will even record the voiceover for you. Check it out. You simply add a detailed prompt, such as create a 15 minute video about the potential effects of mass migration in a country. Use visually appealing footage and use a British voice along with engaging background music. You will then have to choose the audience, the look and feel of the video, and the platform on which you are planning to upload the video. Here's a sample of the video it created. Have you ever wondered how mass migration affects a country? This simple question opens up a complex web of topics that are intertwined with our global society's fabric. If you are not satisfied with the video, you can click the regenerate option and generate a new version and add changes using the command box. You can command to add subtitles and it will add them easily into the video. You also be given the option to change video clips and edit the script and after that you can export your video for the world to see. My favorite feature that NVIDIA AI offers is the ability to clone your own voice. For the first time ever, you can create videos without having to edit or record anything. So if you are ready to start making videos with ease, I highly suggest NVIDIA AI. You can get started with NVIDIA AI for free and can create up to four videos for free, but with a watermark. If you're serious about video creation and want to publish videos without a watermark, which I highly recommend and receive access to millions of royalty-free stock footage and real human sounding voiceovers and the ability to clone your own voice, you should upgrade to a paid plan, which starts as low as $20 a month. Check them out with the link in my description and now back to the video. ¿Cómo vamos a ganar dinero? Arreglando, arreg cualquier cosa ahí, claro. So, me and Fabian went shop to shop trying to make $10 and because Fabian didn't have papers, nobody would hire us. He even asked the missionaries if he could sweep the church. They let us in. However, they would not give Fabian $10 to sweep the church. We kept walking and Fabian noticed a homeless man on the curb. Yo no pensaba que aquí en Nueva York podía encontrar gente de la calle. Un país totalmente desarrollado. Yo dije, chuta, hay no de ver gente en la calle. Solo en mi país, Ecuador, los países pobres. How does it make you feel that, to know that here in the United States we have a lot of homeless people and they don't even get the treatment that you get here? Creo que sí, he visto eso, sí. Que mejor trato tienen los migrantes que los, la gente en la calle. Yeah. Yo, a mí me da mucha tristeza ver una persona en la calle, mucha tristeza. Y, y que Dios me libre de eso, ¿no? We still need to make our $10, the missionaries couldn't help us, so we gotta keep going. It's getting risky right now, I'm a little hungry. We eventually found a street market where we thought we could make $10. My friend right here, he's a migrant from Ecuador, and we're trying to make $10. What would be the best way for someone here, for a migrant, to make $10 here in the city of New York? Um, una de ellas puede ser pidiendo, sí, de verdad. ¿Usted tiene un problema? Mucho problema. Bueno. Yo te voy a ayudar con 10 dólares, porque un día yo también fui emigrante. Yo no quisiera que usted me regale, quisiera ayudar a trabajar para ganarme esos 10 dólares. No, 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 es que 
yo te lo voy a dar con corazón y gracias a Dios soy legal ahora, pero en un tiempo yo estuve igual que usted, con muchos problemas. Muchas gracias. You, you were once as well migrant here in the city? Todo. Sí, claro. ¿Y qué consejos te diría a mi amigo? Empezar a buscar un buen trabajo. Todo se puede si, si pones la fe en Dios en que, y hay que lucharle porque no hay otra forma. Aquí en New York, si no trabajas, tienes problemas, no, no tienes dónde dormir, dónde comer. Así es, amigos, y gracias por su, por su maravilloso consejo. We just earned $10, well, we just were given $10 pretty much. So, we can either use this $10 by lunch, or we can invest this $10 and make $20. ¿Ganaremos más dinero? Vamos. Claro, come on. All right, we're going to start a little business right now. We're going to start making some money. With the $10 we made, we then bought eight oranges for $2. And Fabian came up with the idea to go on the subway and start selling oranges on the subway. Quiero vender todas estas mandarinas para comer. Fabian tried his best to sell the oranges. However, nobody would buy from him. And actually, somebody stole two oranges from him. No. <laughs> and because we couldn't sell any on the subway, we headed to Times Square in hopes of being able to sell our oranges. Right here, we have our six oranges and now we're trying to make about sixteen dollars so that way we can get lunch for the day. Listo? Naranjas! Hola mi reina! Hola? Un dólar! Tres! Un dólar! We got two more oranges to sell. Oh! Ella donó un dólar. Some people are buying oranges. We've sold four of them so far. However, other people have donated money. Fabian sold the orange and I think he also fell in love. <laughs> Alright, Fabian's out here getting dollars and stealing the hearts of women. Una linda experiencia, gracias. Conocí mucho aquí. Y bueno, hay, falta una banderina más. Uh, it's very good though. <laughs> Alright, we might not be selling the best and oranges, but we sold all the oranges and now it's time to go get some lunch. ¿Cómo se siente? Muy contento. Fabian and I enjoyed our lunch and all he wanted was some loaded french fries. I said goodbye to Fabian and told him I would meet up with him the next day to finish the 24 hours. After Fabian, we met up with a migrant who has been able to escape the shelter system with his family into an apartment on the south side of the city. Come up a staircase here and above below us is a laundry mat and they come up here and there, it looks like there's a bunch of other rooms as well. And then come through here and then here's a room for his family is where they're living, and it's a pretty nice place, honestly. They got a kitchen, two bedrooms, and a bathroom. Para su alquimento aquí en este casa, ¿cuánto es para alquilar un lugar así? $1,650. It's $1,600 per month here inside of this house. I've heard it's super hard for people to find these living situations here in New York City, and so I'm wondering, how are you able to get a situation like this? La esposa mía siempre nosotros salíamos a mirar most migrants do not live in houses or apartments, rather they live in schools and hotels that have been transformed into shelters. There are a few main shelters I have identified here in the city of New York. We first went to the Watson Hotel to see what was going on there. Excuse me. Oh, we were just checking it out. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You can't go inside, sir. Oh, we can't go inside? This is the, this is the uh, home shelter. Home and shelter? Yes, this is the shelter. How many, how many floors is this hotel? This is not a hotel. Yeah, it's a shelter. Literally right outside, it says the Watson Hotel. Here outside the hotel, everyone has their bikes, tons of them. And a lot of times, crime is affiliated with these bikes because there are biker gangs here in New York City. And they use these bikes, such as these ones right here. And there's no plates. That can cause a lot of trouble because they're not registered bikes. And then from there, they can go do whatever they want with them and it's untraceable for a crime or anything like that. Outside the hotel we met a mother who had just barely had her baby here in the United States. Y, y nació la bebé aquí. Y hace cuando días que nació la bebé? Hace 16 días. 16 días. Y ahora con a lot of migrants will have babies here in the United States in hopes of having an anchor baby, which boosts their likelihood of receiving citizenship here in the country. Entonces, ¿cuánto tiempo está ahí en Watson? Dos meses. Y ahí pagan por 
No, no, ahí no pagamos, este, esto es totalmente gratis, es una ayuda que nos brinda el Estado. ¿Y qué reciben adentro de los hostels? Hay una buena atención, sí, no lo puedo negar. Este... ¿Reciben comida cada día? Sí, sí, sí todos los... ¿Cuántas comidas al día? ¿Tres? Eh, sí, 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 su desayuno, este, la, la almuerzo, la cena, sí, todo. ¿Ahí reciben seguro también por medicament medicamentos? Sí, sí, mira, ellos se encargan de hacer todo eso, pues de hecho tramitan lo que es el Medicaid. Hasta... ¿Le ayudan para conseguir asilo? Y... Eh, sí, para hacer el trámite y, aplica y aplicar, y es gratuito. Re ¿Reciben abogados también? Abogados también, eh, sí. Ah, sí, la, eh, la Cruz Roja también se enlaza con ellos y pues te brindan la, esa ayuda gratuita. ¿Y los ab abogados son gratis también? Sí, los abogados también son gratis. Entonces ahora mismo... Tienen las maletas, tienen las maletas y ahora ¿a dónde van ustedes? Bueno, mira, ahora este, nos dirigimos hacia, de hecho pedimos el, el, el pasaje, nos lo dan también gratuito y nos vamos hacia Arizona. ¿A Arizona? Fony, Arizona, sí. Wow, y, ¿Y le dieron eso para gratis? Sí, gratis, gratis. El vuelo es gratis este, totalmente. Eh, vamos porque realmente acá en Nueva York, como sabemos, está colapsado, ¿no? este, mucho migrante. Ahí dentro del hotel ellos... Uh, coordinaron todo eso. Sí, ellos, este, sí, ellos coordinaron todo. I also want to ask some of the New Yorkers about the migrant crisis they are living in currently. What do you think is eventually going to happen to all these migrants and happen to the city here? Uh, if this continues the way it's going, uh, the city cannot handle this. They're trying to, but they, they can't. They're going to end up suffering, like like the homeless people. They're yeah. going to end up wandering the streets, uh, struggling to make ends meet, and that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. I mean, we brought them here to help them. But it's going to be the opposite. Yeah. They're just going to be just as bad as they were in their country. And do you feel like the majority of New Yorkers are upset that a lot of their tax dollars are going to funding the migrant crisis? Yeah, they are. They are. They are. They are. But at the same time, you have a lot of people that, like me. We are upset about the tax dollars going that way, but at the same time, we can't be angry at them either. Is mm -hmm. Because they're not the ones that, if the door is open, you're going to go through. If the door's open, you're gonna go through. That's it. Like I can't blame them for that. Yeah. If if I'm str if I'm in danger over here and this gate's open, I'm gonna go in there. And that's it. They're like if I'm not supposed to go in there, the owner of that building should lock that up yeah. or something. But, so you think the problem needs to be taking control of more down at the border and make sure that people yeah, aren't coming yeah, in that way they can't get the into the cities. Too. I mean, uh, I get it. The president wanted to prove that maybe he's humanitarian or something, but. Uh, you got to sit down and work this out. You need a game plan. Need, they need a solid game plan. They can't just do things just like that. Yeah. Not Wild Wild West. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Do you feel like a city is at danger now with like migrant gangs arriving? Yes, yes. Uh, and it's not because of the hardworking ones. No, it's not them. It's the, the elements that came with them. We have no idea how many gangs are in here. We have no idea how many mafia working guys are in here or how many people are with the cartel mm -hmm. that just went through or how many people from the Middle East came through the border with these guys. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. We have no idea how many enemies we have in, in, infiltrated in the country. It's a little scary that we could potentially be, that we could potentially we could be paying for... Here. We could have a lot of sleeper cells here that maybe they're waiting for their boss to say, go, and and we're sitting ducks. Yeah, it's a little scary that our money's potentially being used to pay for cartel and gangs to live here in the United States. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. Sheep's Head Bay to Lower Manhattan, police say a gang of recent migrants from Venezuela terrorized New Yorkers, but is part of a larger pattern of criminal gangs police say they have discovered in the migrant community. Migrants have attacked police officers and many people have been robbed from migrants on scooters. And with Venezuela being the safest it's been in over 22 years, many people believe the gangs have moved north to the USA. And later in this video, I'll be going night crawling with viral news, New York City to chase migrant crime at night. But while there's still daylight, I went to the biggest migrant shelter in New York City, the Roosevelt Hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel is actually the center where all the migrants come in. And then from here, they are dispersed into all the other shelters. And I'm gonna share with you guys how much these hotels are making off the migrant crisis here in New York City. Between the Row, Roosevelt, and Watson Hotel, there are 2,952 rooms, and at a rate of $300 per night, that is $885,000 per day, $6.2 million per week, and $26.6 million per month. All these families right now that you see here on the street of New York, they just got kicked out of the hotel room, and now they're getting moved to another one. This happens literally every day. People get kicked out of the hotel, more people are brought in, and then they're kicked out onto the streets into another hotel room. Ah, uh, ¿y ahí cuánto tiempo han podido quedarse aquí en Roosevelt? No. Seis meses. Ah, bueno, sí, seis meses. Seis meses aquí sí, en Roosevelt. ¿Te sienten bien aquí en Nueva York? ¿Qué, ¿Qué son sus planes aquí? Ay, sí, 
Sí, <ríe> nos vamos para Houston el martes. ¿Y ellos pagan para sus aviones, sus sí, vuelos? Sí, estábamos haciendo eso. Ellos Hoy estaban haciendo los trámites para eso. Entonces, ¿el hotel paga por sus vuelos para ir a otro lugar o es algo mío? Sí. Ah, ok, wow. Donde ya nos sentamos a gusto. Ah, ok. ¿Ustedes pueden decidir, pueden tomar la decisión de dónde quieren ir? Sí, sí claro, claro. Eso. Ah, okay. ¿Y de ahí ellos pagan para que vayan a cualquier sí, nos ciudad? Sí, brindan ese apoyo también. Sí. Now the hotels are actually paying for these people to move out of the hotels and then they're buying them plane tickets to whatever city they want. They just said they have the option to go anywhere and they're going to Houston at the end of March. So now New York City, instead of paying $1,000 a month on these migrants, they're going to be spending the money on airplane tickets to get them out of the city. While we were filming this video, Mayor Adams broke news saying New York City will no longer house single migrant men for longer than 30 days. So we headed over to the largest only men's shelter in New York City to talk to the migrants about what they had to say about being kicked out of the shelters. The, the people who are seeking asylum here, and they've already been abused a lot through the system of this line right here all winter, sub-freezing temperatures, standing outside for all day long, more than three hours on that line across the street, all right, given one boiled egg, one piece of bread, and one orange a day. So do you think it's right what the governor, what the governor is doing right now, or do you think it's going to cause more havoc here in the city? No, no, it's not. Well. I think that the correct way to put it is that it's going to cause more suffering for these people that cannot work because the government will not give them their work papers, all right? That this, that this, process, uh, this process of seeking asylum is taking too long, and this is the only reason why they're waiting on this line, because otherwise it, you can ask anything. All they need is their work papers. If they had the work papers, they would get work, all right, so help stimulate the economy, and they wouldn't have to wait for shelter because they would all be paying rent somewhere. And so after this, where are you guys going to go? So después de estos 30 días, ¿a dónde van? En la calle. Vamos a estar desamparados en la calle y sobreviviendo. Sobreviviendo. Y, y si tú te fijas, la violencia apenas comienza a desbordarse y no hay todavía mucha gente en la calle. Imagínate cuando ya esta gente ya no tenga un, un techo donde dormir. Todos van a estar en la calle. El crimen va a aumentar. Va a estar en su pico más alto, en New York City. Traba, eh, buscamos trabajo, pero el problema que no nos quieren dar una oportunidad de trabajo es porque no tenemos un permiso de trabajo. Entonces yo veo como algo, eh, algo, algo tonto el ponernos en un shelter y no darnos la oportunidad de trabajar. Nosotros salimos a buscar trabajo, pero no tenemos los documentos que eh, la ley requiere para darte una oportunidad de empleo. Entonces, ¿cómo le hacemos? Si no podemos trabajar, ¿cómo, ¿cómo podemos nosotros apoyar al país para que esto mejore? No tenemos permisos de trabajo, no, no tenemos social security. ¿Y vinieron aquí para trabajar? Todos estamos aquí, si tú lo preguntas, todos estamos para trabajar, sacar adelante a nuestra familia y hacer más grande este país. Pero sin papeles, ¿cómo lo podemos hacer? La gente tiene que comer. La gente tiene que sobrevivir de alguna o de otra forma. Al bloquearse todas las ayudas o al bajar las ayudas para nosotros, lo que va a pasar es que el crimen va a aumentar. La gente no va a poder aguantar hambre, la gente tiene que buscar qué comer. Y la mayoría se sienten frustrados y esperaron que no vinieran aquí. ¿Cómo? La mayoría, si tú, si tú les preguntas y lo notas, pues están insatisfechos. Insatisfechos no porque no, nosotros no venimos aquí a pedir que nos regalen nada. No venimos a pedir que, a, a darles lástima a ustedes. Nosotros queremos trabajar, queremos nosotros ganar nuestro propio dinero, pagar nuestra propia renta y ya no estar dependiendo en un shelter. En un shelter nos maltrata, en un shelter no todos los guardias de seguridad nos tratan bien, algunos nos tratan con racismo y tenemos que agachar la cabeza, tenemos que quedarnos callados porque si dices algo te sacan. A la gente no ayuda, nadie ayuda, lo que hacen es criticar. Y la lógica es que el muchacho que está en el refugio no es feliz, él quiere salir a trabajar para pagar su arriendo. Colombia, Ecuador, Brasil, los venezolanos, por una parte hemos estado en todos los países, en todos los países pagamos arriendo. Y aquí no vamos a poder pagar un arriendo que es el mejor país de todos. Claro que podemos pagar un arriendo, lo que es que no tenemos cómo trabajar porque no, no nos reciben. En Colombia nos dan un permiso de trabajo, trabajan, en Ecuador trabajan, en Perú trabajan. Todos. Los que trabajan, porque hay otros que no trabajan. ¿Creen que estarían más felices en sus propios países ahora? O? No, la verdad yo en mi país, ni que tenga dos trabajos podría sobrevivir. Y si yo consigo en mi país un buen trabajo y salgo adelante, consigo carro, casa, un buen futuro, 
lo que voy a conseguir es que mensualmente voy a tener que darle una cuota al jefe del barrio o de la ciudad para que no me quite todo lo que tengo. En este país yo puedo tener un futuro carro como muchos lo tienen y puedo vivir tranquilo porque no me va a extorsionar a nadie. En cambio, en el país mío, si yo logro tener un futuro, me lo van a extorsionar. Estén ocupando camillas, porque no son camas con colchones, son camillas de guerra. No me quejo, pues yo dormí en la selva encima de una piedra. No me quejo. Pero, ¿eso le molesta? Bueno, dale su permiso de trabajo a todos los morenos y a todos los latinos para que se vayan. Y dele sus socias para que paguen impuestos. Así es. Porque nosotros yo, queremos bueno, pagar impuestos, nosotros queremos ser parte de esta sociedad, de esta economía, pero ¿cómo lo hacemos si no tenemos lo que la, la ley y lo que pues, nos piden para trabajar? No tenemos. It's obvious all these men are frustrated and angry with the fact that they'll be homeless in 30 days. Looking at all these men sitting on the park bench, I thought of something that really made me wonder. Something I find super interesting about the migrant crisis here is all these migrants are getting tons of money to be put in these shelters. However, none of them speak English. And if they want to actually help the migrants out here in New York City, all these people would have books in their hands learning how to speak English. I had to learn how to speak Spanish. It took me about three months to the point where I could have good conversations. And all these people that are sitting here, and if they had a book, they could actually be learning how to speak English, and that way they could be able to work because here in New York City and in America, the majority of us do not speak Spanish or French. And so by these people not speaking the language that we speak here, they're at an extreme disadvantage of New York City and the government and Joe Biden. If wanted to help these migrants, they would have books in their hands so that they could learn English. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the migrant crisis here in New York City? They gotta, they gotta really do something about it. It's like you know, it's it's one thing to help people out, but it's but not at the expense of people who pay taxes, not the expense of people who live in New York and diminishing their quality of life. Um, it just has to be managed a lot better. There's a point where you let in so many people, and then you make budget cuts for schools. You're really taking away from services that taxpayers pay for, especially in New York, which you get taxed exorbitantly. Yeah, how much are you guys getting taxed? So there's a New York state tax, then there's a New York City tax, and then on top of that we have we have federal. So we're getting taxed three times. Say so you earn a dollar. What percent of that dollar do you think you're actually getting? What do you think? 38, 45, and then we get you know then, then our quality of life, you know, diminishes. It's like you know we have a saying in New York from New Yorkers. New York's the only place we can make $150,000 and live like you're making 60. Because all the migrants stay in shelters, it's impossible for me to stay a night with them tonight. And so rather than going out and sleeping with the migrants tonight, I'm meeting up tonight with viral news. New York City with Leroy and we are going to be going around tracking around migrant cr crime and checking out anything else that happens with migrants here in the city. We got, what do you call these right here? We got the police scanner, Nick. We're going we're gonna to listen to what I think might be connected to migrants that are committing crimes in the area. Again, it's a very small group of them, but again, that small group of them is making all of them look bad, right? So, look, I'm not an anti-migrant guy. I believe people that need help should get help if they're true asylum seekers. But when you're lying and you're sneaking in gangs that are not real asylum seekers, I think they should get kicked out, right? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be here. Yeah, and so a lot of gangs are coming in here right now. That's what a lot, even the migrant today said that a lot of, we're getting a lot of garbage from other countries mm -hmm. here. And so they're causing a bunch of crime. And are they, what, are, what kind of crimes are they committing down here? Look, it's getting worse and worse. Uh, we have a lot of shoplifting robberies, stabbings. Some poli my police sources are stating they're, they're allegedly connected to murders. Uh, they're definitely connected to stabbings. We know that for sure. Shootings, they're pulling out guns. Uh, they're shooting at cops now. If you, you remember the Times Square incident that happened uh, last month. It's getting bad. Look, the migrants tell me all the time, all right? And they're scared to say it out loud in front of people. The people they ran from followed them here, right? And that's a problem. And I'm hoping the government will take care of it. And, you know, with us, somebody like me and you that are showing what's really going on, we have to mm -hmm. shine a light on it. Because if we don't shine a light on it, no, no one's going to care. Mm -hmm. We're going to be going around, taking the night on the town, trying to figure out what's going on with all these gangs and all this stuff that's happening here in New York City because it's getting wild. Leroy, what do we got going on right so here? We are in Midtown South NYPD station right now. So from what I'm being told is about 70% of the people that are being brought in now between 70 to 50 percent are migrants. Uh, uh, people that are brought into the jail. Yeah, the prisoners jail. right now. The people who are getting arrested, it's, it's a large percentage of migrants that are getting arrested either for shoplifting, pickpocketing, or some something else, moped, illegal mopeds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang out here and we are going to wait for some prisoners to come in 
and we're going to film them. We're going to show you what real New York is and, and what's going on in New York today. And it's important for people to see this. Here's the thing, Nick. So the reason why is this is a heavily dense populated area of migrant shelters and hotels. So again, you, you, we threw people with here with no money, no nothing, and they're out here stealing to, to make a living. And some of them are doing it to feed themselves, and some of them are actually organized crank, uh, crime gangs. And they, this is planned in advance. So. Let's see what we got here today. While we were outside the station, many people were brought in. I cannot confirm if any of these people were migrants. However, these are the people they brought in that night. What's the catch and release law so like it's, here it's, with the migrants? A, those are called DATs, right? Desk appearance tickets, where they just let you out with no bail, no nothing. You got to appear back to court. A lot of the migrants, when they do that, they never appear back to court. They just disappear on us. They use three, four different names. Now they're able to buy fake IDs from, from, Queens, from Queens in New York. They're selling fake IDs. So we don't know who these people are, right? They're not even using their real names when they cross the border. They throw away their passport. They throw away their ID. They throw away anything that identifies them. So here, here the in the United States, they, they can literally transform their names as much time as they want, pretty much, going from one hotel, one, one prison, one place to yeah, another. Yeah, pretty much. Look, Unbelievable. The, the commissioner himself, Commissioner Kramban, said these are ghost criminals. He said these people are ghost criminals. We can't. We don't know who they are. This year, we got the election coming up. Do you think a lot of these migrants are going to be able to vote? Look, if they lie with the fake social security numbers and all that stuff, very possible. I know right now, New York judge overruled uh, a, a law that was going to be passed where it's going to let undocumented immigrants uh, uh, vote in, in our New York in our, in our local election. Right? That's not happening, right? Thank God that's not happening. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't know who these people are. Voting is, is left for citizens and citizens only, like me and you, like your mom, like all of us yeah. that grew up in America, that we're American citizens, and we have a right to say what we, we want done in government, and that's how we vote our people in. Mm -hmm. People who have no clue about our government, people are, who are, are not American citizens should not vote. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. But these migrants are able to find fake social security numbers that are allowing them to get jobs and stuff like that. That stuff is happening here. Yeah, yeah. They, they are getting fake IDs and they are getting uh, fake uh, fake social security numbers. After a long night of being out in the city with New York City Viral News, night crawling around the city, we're back in the Bronx and we're meeting back up with Fabian to see what he's gonna be doing this morning as we continue living with migrants and spending 24 hours with the migrants here in New York City. Fabian, ¿qué vamos a hacer hoy día? Hoy día irnos a la iglesia, a adorar a Dios, Los domingos, siempre los domingos son es el día especial para Dios, donde uno se acerca a Dios. All right, so today it sounds like Fabian, he just wants to go to the church. Uh, it says, and so we're going to head to church, Fabian. The day before when we were trying to make money, the missionaries invited Fabian to church. So we're going to church with our guy, Fabian, right now. Ya vamos a la iglesia. All right, we're in church right now. Fabian's getting a little too close to my mom. I'm a little worried about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's the end of this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.